Hi everyone, welcome to day one, seven one, operations on functions. This time in the section, we're gonna focus on something called composition of functions. So as we get started, let's just do a little bit of review. So looking at example one, if we let f of x equals two x and g of x equals x plus one, can we find the following? The first one, f of negative three. So, do you remember what we have to do? Hopefully you do. And you say, oh, all we're going to do is substitute negative 3 into function f, which is exactly right. So, f of negative 3 is going to be equal to 2 times negative 3. So we substitute in, and we evaluate, and we get negative 6. All right, pretty easy. Now, for example b, we want to find g of 6. So, as we've done in the past, we're simply substituting 6 into function g. So, it'll look something like the following. g of 6 is equal to 6 plus 1. And what do we get? We're going to get 7. Okay, so those should have been a, a pretty straightforward review. Okay, well, what about the following examples? F of G of 2. So what do you think we need to do here? Okay, well, just like with order of operations, we work inside out. So the first thing I'm going to focus on is this G of 2. All right, and we know how to find G of 2. So we'll focus on what G of 2 is by simply substituting 2 into g. So we'll have 2 plus 1 which gives us 3. So what is f of g of 2 really asking for? Well since g of 2 is 3 this is really asking for what is uh, what is f of 3? All right, and now it's just like the examples up above. So now we're just gonna substitute three into f and we will solve. So we have two times three and we get positive six. So finally, our ultimate answer is f of g of two is equal to six. Okay, so now part D is very similar. The only difference is now we want G of F of negative one. So again, we work inside out. So the first thing I wanna find is what F of negative one is. So F of negative one is two times negative one or simply negative two. So this is really asking for us to find G of negative 2. So now we simply substitute negative 2 into function g and evaluate. So negative 2 plus 1 and we get negative 1. So our final answer g of f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1. All right. So, this process has a special name, and what that special name is, is when you evaluate one function, then use that answer to evaluate a second function, we are performing composition of functions. So that's what we just did up above. We composed one function into another. So that's composition of functions. All right. And so leads us to some new notation. Okay. So just like yesterday we did addition, subtraction, multiply and divide, today we're talking strictly composition of functions. So the notation that we used up above was f 
of g of x, meaning we would put g of x and substitute that function into f. But the notation that we are going to use now is parentheses f and this little open circle, all right? And that's the f of g of x. So it's kind of like the multiplication symbol, except this time it's an open circle and it's a small open circle. And you'll see this on our next page of notes. So the way we, we read this is f of g of x. Okay, so those two are uh, comparable, the, the f of g of x and the f of g of x. Those are the same, um, just different notation. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next page and try some examples using composition of functions. All right, so let's take a look at example two. Now we're gonna let f of x equals two x minus three and g of x equals three x plus four. We wanna find the following and simplify completely. So if we took, take a look at example a, f of g of x. So notice that symbol for composition of functions, that open circle and it's small, okay? So again, it's, this is the same as saying f of g of x written this way. So if it helps you to write it that way, do that. Because what this is telling us to do is it's telling us to take this function g, 3x plus 4, and plug it into the x in f of x. All right, so it looks something like the following. So we really want f of, and instead of g of x, we're just going to substitute what g of x is, 3x plus 4. Okay, and now we are going to plug that 3x plus 4 in where x is for f. So it's going to look like the following. All right, oops, I want... All right, so it's going to look like 2 times that quantity, 3x plus 4, minus 3. So we're just substituting. And now we clean it up and evaluate, okay? So we can distribute that 2 into the parentheses, and we'll get 6x plus 8. And we can't forget about that minus 3 in the end. So then our final answer after we gather all of our like terms is going to be 6x plus 5. All right, so f of g of x is equal to 6x plus 5. So when I plugged g into function f, that's what we got. We got our new function of 6x plus 5. Okay, so let's take a look at the next example. All right, part B, where now it's saying g of f of x. So it looks similar, but the order is changed. All right, order is very important. And if it helps us, rewrite it as g of f of x. So what it wants us to do this time is take function f, 2x minus 3, and plug it into the x in g of x. So we're just substituting. So it looks something like the following, all right? g of 2x minus 3. All right, and again, we're just substituting into g, all right? Just like we were doing before. So it's going to look like the following. We have 3 times that quantity 2x minus 3 plus 4. So 2x minus 3. And now we distribute the 3, we clean everything up to get our final answer. So 3 times 2x, we're going to get 6x. 3 times negative 3 is minus 9. And then can't forget about that plus 4 in the end. And when we clean everything up, we get 6x. 
uh, minus 5 this time. So g of f of x is equal to 6x minus 5. And notice we get two different answers for example a and b because order matters. We have to be very careful with our signs. All right, so use what we did above, and I want you to now try example three on your own. All right, so I'm going to give you a little bit of time, and then uh, I will display the answers, and we will call it a day. All right, so go ahead and pause the video trying these two compositions. Okay. Hopefully you were able to give it a try, all right, and um, initially with f of g of x, that's telling us we want to take g of x and substitute it for both of the x's, anywhere there's an x in f. So initially it's going to look like this, f of 2x minus 4. And if we did this correctly, we're going to have the quantity 2x minus 4 squared minus 3 times 2x minus 4 plus 2. So 2x minus 4 and then 2x minus 4, cleaning everything up. Now, here's where we tend to make mistakes is at this area right here. We cannot distribute that power inside. This is a binomial, we're squaring it. So it's like saying 2x minus 4 times 2x minus 4. If you did this correctly, you are going to get three terms. 4x squared minus 16x plus 16, all right? And then we go ahead and we distribute that negative three and continue cleaning everything up. So that's gonna be minus six x plus 12, and don't forget about that plus two in the end. So once we clean up and gather all of our like terms, we'll get our final answer of four x squared minus 22 x plus 30, all right? So that was a tricky one because you had to square that binomial and there were two substitutions to make. All right, so let's see how you did in example B. This time you're plugging into function G. So you're taking this entire function F and just plugging it into the X in G. So this will be G of that entire quantity, X squared minus three X plus two. And when we made that substitution, we have two times that quantity minus four. So x squared minus three x plus two. After we clean everything up, we've got two x squared minus six x plus four. Don't forget about that minus four in the end. And gathering our like terms, our final answer is simply two x squared minus 6x, okay? So if you have any questions with composition of functions, make sure you ask your teacher tomorrow and uh, we'll begin class answering any of those questions. All right, hope you have a great day. Bye.